would you like to go next? Uh, so I've had food poisoning for the last couple days, but I'm feeling pretty well now. I think I am just going to go ahead and go into the park tonight because they also, they don't have room for me at Atapalaco, where I am right now. So I think I'm going to go into the park, try to find the campsite I was supposed to be at um, because I don't have any cell service and didn't have everything downloaded. Um, and yeah, uh, poor planning on my part. And then I think I'm going to try to climb the mountain tonight, tomorrow morning. Um, I'll probably start around three or four in the morning. But walking the dogs first. Biley's got to get two 15 minute walks in a day for his physical therapy, so we're walking. Um, they're technically not supposed to be in the park, so I'm not going to be able to take them out of the vehicle at all, except for very quick sneaky potty breaks. Yeah, the road here sucks. Um, so it's a, it's a long 8K to get back to the park. And again, hopefully I can find the campsite that I had pinned on iOverlander, even though I have it in my Google Maps saved. I can't pull it up right now because I don't have any service. Um, lesson learned. The last couple, uh, the last week has been good, very quiet. We were in Mineral de Pozos, um, pretty much just worked like a 40 hour work week. Went out for dinner, had an okay time. And then I got food poisoning on Thursday, it's Sunday. Finally, I got some meds on board yesterday and feeling better now. Um, we'll see if it's, I'm better enough to hike a 17,000 foot mountain tomorrow. Let's see, two classic Kayla mistakes. Um, one, I thought I was going to be closer to the town of Ameka Meka and was going to be able to like have cell service and Wi-Fi. So I'm going to miss a call that's happening in a half hour for work. Sorry. Um, and then I'm going to miss another call tomorrow at 10 a.m. because I'm now going to climb a day earlier than I thought. But I should be back down in time for my 4 p.m. meeting. So I'm like climbing a mountain and worrying about whether or not I'm going to make it to a meeting in time. Um, and then my snack situation is also very classic, Kayla. I... I always forget about food on big hikes. I don't know why. So let me show you what I've got. Actually got our micro spikes, got the hat, got all the layers in here. I'm not gonna show you all of them, but so this is what I have for food. I have cheese, peanut butter in a little tin, a guayaba, and a bunch of cookies. And then I'm currently making hard boiled eggs. Um, so all in all, it's not, the worst food I could ever be eating, right, Niffler? <laughs> but uh, definitely not my best work either. Well, it's 7 o'clock, 7.30. Just about bedtime. We're going to get up around 2.15 um, to start the climb. Um, nice and early. Make sure we can get down in time. And um, we'll see how it goes. The trailhead is at somewhere around eleven or 12,000 feet, and I can feel it. Um... So hopefully the fact that I've been running at 7,500 feet for the last week um, and then I was at 8,000 feet for the last couple days, um, hopefully that's going to help. Um, I guess we'll see. And um, yeah, I mean, route finding, glacier traverses, and um, uh, altitude sickness are my biggest concerns and I'm really ready to turn around if I start feeling really bad or uh, if things feel sketchy. So. Yeah, off to bed. Well, we're somewhere between 14,000 to 500 feet and 15,000 feet above sea level. This has been pretty much the view the whole time, so I haven't been filming much. Uh, it's about 4 a.m., so... I've been climbing for about an hour, um, probably about a quarter of the way up elevation wise and third of the way up distance wise. Um, sun will rise in a couple hours. Sixteen thousand six hundred feet, or something like that. Um, one of the several false summits. <laughs> Just sat down to take a break. That is what we're heading for. I'm tired. I'm definitely tired.
trying to remember to worry about one thing at a time. First, we get up there. Second, we come back down. Third, we give the dogs their potty break. Fourth, we get down to diesel without running out of fuel. Four, fifth, I don't even know. We may get to that meeting on time. Um, and somewhere in there, we're going to be eating and hopefully resting a little bit. But I keep kind of getting worried about like, oh, I only have a quarter tank of gas. Is that going to be enough? I'm like, it's okay. That's not the problem right now. But right now, it's getting up there. And then, even more importantly, getting back down safely. And the dogs went potty at 2 in the morning. So they should be okay. I want to get them out as soon as possible. But uh, rushing and getting myself killed or breaking an ankle is going to help me. One thing at a time. These false summits are killing me. I thought I'd made it. I still have this whole glacier. And that's the top over there. <sighs> so, put our spikes on. We'll see. If it feels sketchy, this is where I'm going to have to turn around. I finally made it. This, according to all trails, is the summit. Holy shit, I'm tired. Holy false summits. Wow. God. Wow, it's beautiful. Popo is crying a little for us. And of course, because real barley can't come, had to bring Safarly. So he made it all the way up. So this is a pretty good vantage point for everything from uh, the false summit where I started feeling really sad. So you've got, let's see, you've got the glacier there, you kind of come down and then you curve around and you come up and then you come up to this notch right here. And then you're pretty much on the ridge line. So it's a lot of up and down, up and down, up and down, and then here. So I'm not gonna film very much here because it it's loose kind of sandy gravel, uh, I guess volcanic ash and gravel, um, but you can kind of see how narrow it is here. Uh, definitely want traction and uh, poles or an ice axe, a glacier axe or something like that. Um, I was definitely using kind of three points of contact at all times and had a couple times where altitude had got me a little dizzy and I was uh, very, very grateful for the, the balance from the poles. This catwalk is probably two meters, maybe a little bit more across, so it's not like you're at danger of randomly falling off the edge, but definitely not a place where you'd want to lose your balance. So this is the section, that's why everyone says you should have crampons and a glacier axe. I'm getting by just fine with yak tracks and trekking poles, but um, I got an early start, so the snow is still nice and firm, very crunchy, nice and nice and grippy. Um, and I'm relatively comfortable on over snow travel. Look at that dead butterfly. Looks like it's thawed out, like it's been in there for a while. That's crazy. And another one. Right there. Huh. This section here above the shelter is absolutely terrifying on the descent. It's super duper loose gravel and sand. I'm like mentally exhausted after that. I think it's finally evening out. Um, I'm getting close to being back to the van. I am utterly exhausted. Um, the descent on this really is really, really tricky. It's very loose sand and gravel. I probably fell six or eight times, um, even with my trekking poles. Um, 
I only hit my knee and cut myself up once. Other times I caught myself pretty well, but I'm just so tired that I can't, I can't surf that sand the way that I might be able to normally. And uh, I know the dogs need to pee, so I'm in a rush. I'm trying to go as fast as I safely can. And it's a hard line to walk, but oh God, we're almost back. My toenails hurt, my ankles hurt, my knees hurt. I'm so tired. It's really beautiful. And it's nice to get to see this, this half uh, since it was just a headlight on the way up. The campsite is right there. And this is just like the worst sort of descent. It's super deeper, little slippery, awful mud. And you can't really tell, but it's pretty steep the whole way down. And I'm just like, I just want to be done. Fuck. We made it. I bet the boys have to pee so bad. I'm so sorry, guys. How was your nap? Very long.